So we're going we're gonna to dive into the Word tonight for a few moments, and, uh, and uh, we're hoping that uh, we can learn together tonight. Pastor Jade will be preaching next Wednesday. We're going to just continue to keep uh, bouncing around a little bit and keeping some things, and we'll come back and do this again for a couple of weeks just to keep it fresh. Uh, but I believe that sometimes it's important to kind of slow down and just kind of get into the Word, and uh, as we did last week. And, and this week, we're going to deal with something that is uh, very uh, near and dear to my heart, and I know it is to many of you as well. And uh, we're going to talk tonight for a few moments uh, about the power of prayer. And uh, I hope that we understand just how important prayer is. And I, I want to share a couple of things with you, a couple of stories actually, uh, before we really get in tonight to share uh, on this topic together. But uh, a friend of ours, a, a, an individual that we know uh, that's in ministry, Stephen Darnell, uh, he made a post yesterday on social media and they are working with some other organizations and I want to share this story with you because it, it makes you pause for a moment, but just goes to show you the power uh, of prayer. And we'll, we'll talk about a couple of things and we'll dive in. And we're going to kind of hit three questions tonight and try to get, uh, get some feedback from these young men that's with me today. Uh, but here's part of what he, he posted yesterday. He says, have you ever attempted to move an orphanage out of a war-torn country to a place of safety. He said, I've learned it's almost impossible. One thing is for sure, it takes more than one or two. It takes a team, but even more so, it takes the hand of God. He said, today has been a full day. Early this morning, Raphael and I left Germany for Poland. He said, then we met up with the 55 passenger charter bus that we had contracted. And from there, we drove four hours to the border and then we waited on the Poland side. But just on the other side was the Ukrainian side, and therefore it was the native home orphanage was being led uh, by the field worker, uh, Coleman Bailey, along with his staff. And the wait for entrance uh, into customs was very long. And there had been three other orphanages in front of them that had been turned back, and every time they were simply hearing these words, send them back, send them back. So it came their turn, and as they got up to the custom agents, they began to hear the same thing that the other three organizations had heard, send them back, they're not allowed to leave. A customs agent then called a supervisor on the phone, and he too simply said, turn them back, they can't pass. But notice what Stephen says. He says, but we prayed. And he said, prayer changes things. He said, I fell on my knees in the back of an empty bus, and I sent out a call for prayer, and individuals around the world began to pray. He said, then all of a sudden, the customs agent returned to the orphanage leaders and said, go ahead. And as our orphanage was passing through, other agents began to say, what are you doing? The supervisor said, send them back. But this particular custom agent did not respond, and our orphanage left the country, and now they're in a bus driving to a place of safety. Can I tell you, God is good. Amen. You say, well, that's one story. Well, I'm going to give you another story very quickly if, and some of you may have saw this, uh, but Landon, if you could put the first photo up for me on the screen, I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, but this gentleman, wrong picture. There you go. Thank you. This gentleman right here had an inoperable tumor on his mouth and on his face. It had already wrapped around his gums, his teeth, and it was getting to where he could not do anything other than he had just had a conversation with his family. And he said, when it gets to where I can't drink out of a straw, then just let me go. Let me wither away. But at a service just a few days ago, Sister Sid Renfro, some of you know her. She's been in this building, ministered for us. 
her husband, Dr. Tom Renfro, who is a medical doctor as well as a minister of the gospel, many years ago, he had this same type of cancer, but it was not just in his face, but it was all over his body. And he had tumors under both arms the size of volleyballs. And his whole uh, staff of t- and his team of doctors that he worked with, after being in torment for an extended period of time, they witnessed him overnight go from nearly a 60 waist down to a 32, and every tumor was gone out of his body. Sister Sid saw this man, and, he, and she went up and began to minister to him, and she simply said, if the Lord can do that for my husband, I believe he can do that for you. And Friday night, this gentleman was sitting in a revival service, and you can show the other picture now, and because of prayer... He was sitting there perfectly normal. So what I'm saying to you today is this, that there has never been a more important time than right now for prayer. I followed another story this week. Um, a, a man of God was talking with some pastors in Ukraine, and a particular pastor there in one of the cities in Ukraine, he has a congregation of 200 people, and they was doing a Skype call, and he simply said, we have been so grac- greatly blessed that he said, N- even though our people have been in the midst of great battle, he said, we have not lost one individual in this war. And the question was, well, is that because you are in an area that has not really been affected? But they said, no, we are in the heart of it. And there's a picture attached to that conversation where there was an actual missile that came through the ceiling and is lodged right by the kitchen sink, but it did not explode. So what I'm saying to you today is prayer is our greatest weapon. But however... Here in the Western world, if we're not careful, it is the weapon that we use the least of all. Now, while I'm so thankful for worship and praise and all of those things and the preaching of the word, and we need all of those things, but you and I today need to understand that prayer is needed now more so than ever before in our lifetime. And you say, why is that? Is I believe this, that we are currently dealing with an antichrist spirit of lawlessness like we have never known in recent years. But along with that, we also are dealing with the spirit of weariness among the people of God. And currently right now, we know this, that right has been condemned while evil has been exalted. We find ourselves in a time of acceleration, as we mentioned last week. And you say, how can you really say that in great confidence? And I I will expound on that just a little bit. And then we're going to dive into this lesson. You know, today you say, how can we say it's getting more gross dark or more evil? Uh, We know this. Evil's always been. But in the last days, we know this. Uh, that there is an acceleration. And right now in our nation alone, just a couple of things that we're dealing with, 60 plus million babies been aborted is not enough now for the extreme left uh, of our nation and extreme liberal agenda that they have. But now we finding that in other many states, there's some crazy things happening. But one of the most um, amazing things that I've seen take place right now is in Maryland and in California. In Maryland and California, they are trying to pass legislation in this very present time where no longer is it legal to abort a child up to the time of its birth, but now they're trying to pass legislation where you can abort a child 28 days after it has been birthed. Can I tell you today, we need to pray. If that isn't enough, notice with me, we find ourselves with everything that's been pushed in our media outlets as well as our social media platforms where they're trying to get a majority of the population of this nation to live in a false reality that just one or two percent, maybe three percent of the population embraces. We today are on a fast track to Sodom and Gomorrah as well as returning to as it was in the days of Noah. There is no way to get off this train track unless somebody begins to pray. You can probably quote Second Chronicles 714. 
If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. If that isn't enough, please hear me. The enemy is not just going after children, but the enemy is going after family. Every 26 seconds in the United States, somebody's getting divorced. Please hear me. Most of those are because of the simple fact we just don't love each other anymore. They've been blinded by the enemy. All of the while, the church has simply become nothing more than an entertainment center that's closed more than it's open. We have to experience change. So how do we experience that change? Is We're going to talk about it a little bit tonight, and that is this, prayer. And I pray tonight that we will have ears to hear and hearts to receive that which the Lord would speak to us uh, this evening. So I'm going to ask Pastor Jade, if you would, please. And if you have your Bibles with you, 1 Timothy chapter number 2. 1 Timothy chapter number 2, the first eight verses. Uh, would you just be so kind to read those? And we'll use that as a foundation to begin our discussion tonight. All right. 1 Timothy chapter 2, one, verses 1 through 8. I exhort thee, therefore... That first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable, peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. And to come to the knowledge of the truth, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. Verse 6, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time, whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle, I speak the truth of Christ and lie not a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. I will therefore that all men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Thank you for the reading of the word of the Lord tonight. Michael, I'm going to jump to you and I'm going to right out of the gate tonight. I'm going to ask you this question. And that is this. Why should believers pray. Well, in uh, the second verse, it says that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Mm -hmm. And we pray that we pray for all manner of men mm -hmm. that they would come to the saving knowledge that God has given us through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And um, I really, through this, I found myself wanting to pray more Mm -hmm. And it says to pray for those that are in authority and that they would give them knowledge right. to give the nation that ability. Right. And uh, I'll let you expound on that more. <laughs> I think why, why should a believer pray um, is because Jesus prayed. Mm -hmm. um, if he's the one we're following after, you'll find him throughout the Gospels telling the disciples to either go on before him or he was found alone by himself praying. And I will tell you, if he is flesh, if he's fully God, and he's right. fully man, and he needed to pray, right. how much more so do I need to pray? Right. Because last time I checked, I'm just flesh and not God. And he was fully God, and he was fully flesh, but he still took time to pray. And I think uh, one, of, one of the greatest... Testaments and, and uh, examples um, of why a believer should pray is you look at the disciples in Jesus' ministry, they never once asked Jesus, how do you preach? Mm -hmm. They never once asked Jesus, uh, how do you get a crowd? Or how do you heal? Or how do you uh, cast a demon out? The one question they asked him blatantly was, Teach us to pray. Right. Teach us to pray. Um, because it is important for the believer 
to not only talk to God, but set up time in their life to allow God to talk to them. Absolutely. So that, that, that to me is why a believer yeah. should pray. Jesus did it. The disciples mm -hmm. asked how to do it mm -hmm. because they saw how important it was to him. Mm -hmm. And how are we to know the plan of God if we do not communicate with God or read his word? Absolutely. And I'll take that just a little further because one of the greatest examples that we do have in Scripture is the simple fact that Jesus stole away and he prayed. And you say, well, why did he pray? He was all man, but yet he was all God. Yeah. There is a key thing that happens when a man prays or a woman prays. And we find it in Luke chapter 3, verse number 21. It says, now when all the people were baptized, it come to pass that Jesus also was baptized and praying, the heavens was open. Yeah. How many's ever felt like the ceiling was as high as it was that you could get to? But can I tell you today that we have to learn how to persevere in prayer? And that's when I began to go through and I found Luke chapter 3, and I began to think that, you know, here he was. As he was been baptized and he began to pray, and I'm dropping stuff already. Help us, Jesus. Uh, pray for this table to expand. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, but we find that as he began to pray, uh, that the heavens open. Can I tell you, I understand that he inhabits the praise of his people uh, and all of those things, but you only begin to really hear and see that the heavens actually are open when people began to pray. Another example of that is you probably know the story of Stephen as he was been stoned to death because he preached the gospel and they didn't want to hear what he had to say. And as they were throwing stones at him, he looked up into heaven and he began to pray and he said, Lord, do not hold this to their charge. But the heavens opened and he saw Jesus standing on the right hand. He was saw into the heavenlies because the heavens was open, not because of the message that he had preached, uh, but because of the prayer that he prayed. So I think you and I need to understand that there has never been a time such as this in our lifetime where we needed the heavens to open up because then, and when we experience that, we began to experience the supernatural provision of God. We also find that why should ble uh, believers pray is prayer is not optional, even though some may think it is. But Isaiah 56, verse number seven, you begin to find that the prophet is speaking and he's sharing, and really he's talking about do not pollute the Sabbath day. Make sure you keep the commandments. Make sure you, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, but then you get into verse number seven. It says, and even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. And he begins to talk. He says, their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. He was saying not just for the children of Israel, not just for the nation of Israel, but he said any and all that would ever come to know me, he said my house will always be identified as a house of prayer. And Paul goes further in 1 Thessalonians 5:17. It's a very short passage of scripture, but it's one very powerful. It says that we are to pray without ceasing. Now, that does not mean we walk around 24 hours a day and don't do anything else but pray. If you can do that, praise the Lord. Uh, but, uh, but meaning this, we are to keep our mind stayed up on the Lord. Let us not visit, but let us continually keep our mind fixed on him. And in the, in the original passage that Jade read in verse number eight, we know this, all men everywhere are to pray. So therefore we, we find that it is not optional, but it is a command that is given to men and women of faith. And the reason for it is not to bring hardship or difficulty to us is but this, we have a loving father that desires to commune and to fellowship with us. And it's very important that we understand that our role cannot be substituted by anything else when it comes to prayer, but we must be men and women of prayer. Amen. The second thing that I would ask tonight is this, what is prayer? What is it just some words or what is prayer? What does prayer look like to you, Pastor Jay? 
Um, prayer, and I kind of alluded to it earlier, um, I think this, the simple short answer is prayer is communication with God. Um, so, and it kind of ties into why should we pray and what is prayer because um, we, we, we talked about this Monday night um, in, in our young adult Bible study is that we have a generation that is convinced that worship is prayer. Now, worship is, can be a part of prayer but worship is not prayer. Um, the Bible tells us in Psalms 100 and in verse 4, it says, Enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Praise and worship and thanksgiving, I always see it as it opens the door, but prayer is going into the holies of holies. So you know that the temple and the tabernacle, you have the outer court and the inner court, and then you have the holies of holies. It was a place where the priests communed with God. It was a sacred place. It was a special place. You couldn't just waltz in there. You, I mean, you, you had to prepare. He had to prepare his life, his heart, his mind to enter into a place where he could commune with God. So I, I want to say that first of all. But what prayer is in, in that communication is, is it, it, I think it explains it very well in the first verse of, uh, of, of Timothy, if you want a more uh, broad answer, if you will, or a more detailed answer. He says, I exhort you, therefore, that you first of all, first of all, in supplications, prayers, and intercessions, and giving of thanks. So, so what he's saying is, he kind of breaks it down. Yes, prayer is communication with God, but he goes into supplications that's petitioning. Mm -hmm. that's, that's casting your cares on, onto the Lord, as the Bible would describe it. And then he says in prayers, in, in speaking with, in worshiping. Wor worship is not prayer, but worship can be used in prayer, if that makes sense. But he, he says supplications or petitions, requesting, mm -hmm. um, prayers, which means prayer or, or, uh, or uh, to earnestly pray or to speak orally to the Lord, and intercession. Mm -hmm. Intercession is you know that original, if you trace that word back, it, all, it means to deal with. It's like when you're dealing with a certain subject or praying for a certain someone, you're interceding specifically for that need. So, right. so yes, the short answer is, it's, to me, it's what is prayer? It's communication with God, but he defines it in that, to me in that first verse is it's supplications. That's a type of prayer. It's right. prayer, praying earnestly, speaking with God, and it's intercession. It's when you're going to God, you feel a burden for someone. Right. You feel a burden um, for some situation or something like that. Um, and I find it, and I'll, I'll pass it to Michael here on what he thinks. But really, if you sum up that first verse, he says, I exhort you or I invoke you. This is Paul writing to Timothy. That first of all, you pray, 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 and give thanks. Because mm -hmm. that's all types of prayer. Mm -hmm. I, I Give petitions, give prayer, and, and intercede at the same time. So he, that's all types of prayer, and give thanks, and do this for all men. As I was studying about prayer, I was thinking, prayer is our first form of offense and our first form of defense yeah. as we pray without ceasing, yeah. knowing Jesus prayed that Peter would not be sifted by yeah. Satan. And I was reading in Ephesians chapter 6, 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, yeah. and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. So as you were saying, we intercede on behalf of others. It's not just about us yeah. when we pray. And um, I went to... Let me make sure I got it right. <laughs> uh, well, it was in Romans, but I lost it. Technology is evil. <laughs> Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So there's times where we need to be praying specifically, but we just don't know what we ought to be praying, and the Spirit will pray on behalf of us. Right. 
and I just thought prayer, from my point of view, was more a part of our armor and our warfare, right. not only just communication with God, but edifying our brothers and sisters, and it just edifies our own soul at the same time and deepens that communication and relationship. Right. I think both of those are good answers for sure, and, but I will take it just a little further with you, with you tonight. Number one is this, prayer is a discipline. Uh, we know this, it is the bending of the will of man, acknowledging the fact that he needs God's help, that we can't do it in ourselves. And we have to bend our will before the Lord and say, Lord, we need you. And we find that in Matthew 6, 9, and 10. It says, after this manner, therefore, pray you, our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven. Meaning this, God, we need your direction. We need your guidance. We need your wisdom. We need your knowledge and your understanding. Prayer is also rendering homage, meaning this. It is a, it is a time where we're, we're giving reverence or respect uh, to the one true God. And we find that in Psalms 108, uh, verse number five, be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens and thy glory above all of the earth. Uh, it's a time where we reverence him, where we respect him. And uh, I believe that prayer should not be something we enter into passively, but it should be something that we sincerely uh, embark. And I believe this, it is very, very beneficial for you to have a designated place as well as a designated time uh, in your personal prayer life. I'm not telling you how or when, uh, but I believe it's very important that you have a place and a time uh, to commune with God. I, I think it's very important. But also prayer is just simply saying, spending time in conversation with God. But I would expound on that a little bit and tell you this, that co a conversation is a two-way street. It's not simply where you come and, and you speak for five minutes or five hours and never stop and listen. But, and I think that's one of the things that we have failed to teach uh, uh, throughout uh, history is that sometimes you just have to wait upon the Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know this, uh, you find in Old Testament scripture, there's a, pa there's a passage that simply says, wait upon the Lord and you will renew your strength. Uh, but we also find that in Philippians four and six, it says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. And if you read on, you will find that there is a reference of once again, wait upon the Lord. Now the waiting sometimes means just to set still in a stilled manner. But also uh, in Isaiah, when you hear the word wait, it means this, that you become intertwined like a three-stranded rope, meaning this, you come together in an intimate manner where it's not easily broken. Yeah. Uh, and, and I believe that's important that we understand that when we do come to a place of prayer, uh, we are bending our will. We're also offering and reverencing who he is, but also we're taking an opportunity to spend time so that we can hear what he has to say concerning us, and which takes us into our final question and we'll wrap this up and give us about five minutes and uh, then if you have some questions we'll try to answer it uh, but what should be our attitude of prayer let me run through a couple of things and I'll let these these uh, gentlemen uh, speak uh, pertaining to this question uh, but our attitude of prayer our torch prayer should be this always we should always pray in faith Hebrews 11 verse 6 simply says that we have to believe uh, we, we have to make sure that when we pray we pray in faith believing and uh, I will tell you this that when faith is present and somebody begins to put action to faith things happen things change and uh, we know today that right now we need to be walking not by sight, but by faith. We also know this, our attitude should be this, we should always pray without wavering. James chapter 1 verse 6 through 8 makes it very clear uh, that we are to be men and women uh, that are very sensitive uh, and not wavering, but that we're steadfast in our walk with the Lord. It doesn't mean, doesn't mean that we change our 
our ideal or our belief by what we see in the natural, but it means this. We believe the word of God to be established and unmovable and unbreakable, and therefore we stand steadfast according to the word, and that's why we can pray in faith believing, and we can see God do some amazing things. As well as we should always pray according to God's will. Uh, we know that according to 1 John chapter 5, verse number 14. And uh, you have heard me say this for years. Uh, and you say, well, how do I know how to pray according to God's will? You do that by praying according to the word. Because the word of God is the will of God. And the will of God is the word of God. If you're praying contrary to the word of God, then you're praying against the will of God. And therefore, you're not going to get anything. So therefore, you have to understand, never forget that the will of God is the word of God. And the word of God is the will of God. And therefore, we should always pray. Uh, to our Father in heaven by coming to him through our Lord Jesus Christ. We should always pray in this manner. Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because he is the door. He is the gateway. And without him, we could not enter in. But the Bible teaches us very clearly that he is the one that is making intercession for us. Hebrews 7, 35, or 25 rather, tells us that, and we should always be sensitive to it. And I'd like to back up just for a moment when we were talking about various types of prayer, the prayer of supplication, prayer of intercession, the prayer of persevering and giving thanks. All of those things are there as well as we are to be, and Michael hit it just for a moment. We should also be positioned to pray in the spirit. And that's why it is so important that men and women come back to a place where they understand that we need to desire the infilling of the power of the Holy Ghost in this hour. There's a lot of things going on in the world that we don't know and don't understand. But I will tell you for years that I have heard my father pray. His prayers come up through the register vents of our home. Uh, I could hear him praying in the spirit. And then I could hear him praying for places and countries that he had never been by the unction of the Holy Spirit. And we will never know this side of heaven what was stopped and what was stayed and who was protected by those men of God in that generation that tarried at the altar and gave, them, they gave their life to a season of prayer. So I'd encourage you to not be fearful of going beyond the lay me down to sleep prayer. But know this, that when we really desire to be in his presence, we can be in his presence. But we have to give ourselves to prayer. So what would you add to the attitude of prayer, Pastor Jay? Well, I mean, you covered about all of it. But, you did it. Uh, that's why I went first. Yeah, so that's, that way I that's, don't have to wrap uh, it up. That, 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 it's, all, it's, all, it's important to, to not pray amiss, to pray according to God's word and to his will. But I think also that we need to be mindful of an attitude, the posture, I'll, I'll use it this way, the posture of our prayer. Um, yes, the Bible tells us that through grace that, that God has given us through Christ Jesus, we can enter into the, th to the throne room boldly and we have access to the Father. I, I understand that, I believe. But the Bible also tells us in James chapter 4 and verse 10 that those who humble themselves before the Lord... He will lift up. Absolutely. Um, and and that, that I believe is it needs to be an attitude of prayer that um, there, there's kind of been a, a small movement, I feel, in um, the more modern type church is um, we have lost the reverence and the respect and the awe and the fear of who God is. Let me tell you, He is the maker of the universe and he is a God that we're going to have to stand before one day. And I never want to be irreverent or disrespectful to the Lord because I'm not owed anything. So when I go into prayer, I thank him for everything that he's given me that I'm not worthy of. Right. I thank him for salvation, the baptism of his spirit. The, I thank him for the call of God. I thank him for my wife, my children. I thank him for everything that I can think of. You said that's a lot. I, I just I, I just find myself in that as we go back to verse one in chapter two here is is having that that spirit of thank that giving of thanks or what that is is gratitude because I don't deserve any of it. So I think it's important. Yes, we need to pray in faith. Yes, we need to pray according to God's will. Yes, we need to do all those things. But go in humble. 
before the Lord, reverent, respectful. Right. But at the same time, it's, it's so interesting is, is when I go in that way and, and just, Lord, I, I thank you, I praise you for who you are, what you mean to me, you know, and that's just kind of a, a glimpse of, of some of it. But I find myself getting to a place that I'm in the throne room right. and he's speaking to me as I'm speaking to him. And uh, it's it's powerful, but always do it in in humility and out of out of that. Because as Pastor referenced in Second Chronicles seven fourteen, he's that was a requirement. You have to humble yourself, right? And pray. So true. You have to humble yourself and pray. Amen. You have to be in the right right posture. Right. Humble yourself and pray. Amen. Turn from your wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. Forgive your sins. Heal your land. Amen. Amen. I, I would just add that at the end of verse 8, it talks about lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting, mm -hmm. and that we pray in Jesus' name. And to me, that's holy hands, repentance. We keep a repentant heart without anger or vengeance towards seek anybody, holiness, yeah. seeking holiness. And we do it with faith believing. Mm -hmm. And as we enter into his presence through our worship, I just keep going to the scripture, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Yeah. And I just think, I mean, that kind of stirs in me mm -hmm. because when we get to a point in our prayer life and cultivating our relationship, anything is possible with God. Yeah. So we can move mountains. We can do all sorts of things yeah. that with man is impossible. Right. And I just feel that effectual fervent prayer just really stirs in me. Yes. And I want to get to a point where yep. we can see miracles, signs, and wonders. Yes. Yeah. Amen. And see that. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. On a more normal basis. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Instead of an occasional event, a continuous right. presence of the Lord. And I believe that's found in Scripture. And Mark chapter number 16 tells us very clearly that as we go into the world sharing the gospel, that these things are to follow those that believe. And I know that sometimes we all look at ourselves and think, well, somebody else could do that or should do that that's more spiritual and has more this or more that or is more gifted. And, uh, but I, I will tell you that one of the greatest moves of God that this nation ever experienced uh, did not come from a birthing place of a message that was been preached, but it came from a place where a businessman began to feel an unction to pray. And you can look through history and you can find what is called and known as the businessman's revival. And it began to, it began by somebody going to the church at noon and saying, I just want to pray. It asked the pastor if he could go and pray. Uh, and then he had invited a couple of people to go and the first time just a couple of people and it began to grow and then it began to develop and uh, it is estimated that because of that that happened it was just in a, f a very short time that there was thousands that was gathering to pray during that time in our history as a nation but when you look at it uh, now from where we're setting it is believed that over a million individuals come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ because somebody, just a man that had a heart after God, decided it was important to pray. I ask you, could you be that man or that woman in the year 2022 that has a burden to spend time with God? Could you be the one that could spark that again because desperately we need we need there to be a move of salvation and deliverance in our nation as well as the nations of the world. Recently, uh, we just said goodbye to a mighty man of God, uh, Pastor David Cho, who pastored the largest Pentecostal church in the world uh, in Seoul, South Korea. He was 80-something years old. He was a man that gave his life to prayer. Uh, Still to this day, at any given time, you will find that there's 40,000 people in the mountains in little prayer shacks praying and fasting because that's how they built their ministry. And uh, it's, uh, it's phenomenal. I believe that it's knocking on the door of a million people in that church. It has services 
all day long continually, one after another, all weekend long, but every day people are praying, seeking the face of the Lord. And uh, it's all birthed, and the foundation is prayer. Uh, Dr. David Cho, he had put together a prayer outline, and I'm not saying you have to use these all the time, but sometimes they're beneficial, and he used uh, the tabernacle, uh, and he took the tabernacle furniture, and it's a, it's a prayer guide that I use at times, and it, it's, it's, a, it's a very wonderful tool, and uh, so uh, I think sometimes if you're distracted, uh, things going on in your world, sometimes these resources are very, very beneficial. And, uh, but, you know, when you go into, when you start looking at the structure of the temple, uh, you're in the outer court, you go to the inner court, you go to the holy place, and you go into the holy of holies. And there's furniture in every one of those areas, and every one of those things represent certain things. And, uh, and when you use that as a guide to pray, and you can find those resources, or I can, I can make you uh, some copies of some of the things that I have concerning them. Uh, but I would encourage you... Uh, to not be passive when it comes to your prayer life, but be more focused than ever. Because, and I said this the other night or the other day and as I was uh, preaching, but I will say it again and uh, in this setting, that that which our children see us do moderately, they will not do at all. But if they see us going after something full of energy and it's important to us, it will be important to them. That's right. But if we are passive about it, then they too will be passive and it will not be an important part of their life. The greatest gift that you can ever give your children or your grandchildren is to teach them how to pray. I have my grandson, he's eight months old and I've already got him praying for me because I need all the prayer I can get. So I tell him every day, I had him today and I was like, Jackson, Pray for Papa, And he's, I have to tell him two or three times, but he's getting it. And he'll take his hand and he'll put it right there. I said, anoint me. I don't care. And, uh, but uh, listen, we have to teach our children the importance of prayer. Amen? So anybody got a question or a comment? I'll have Brother Warren answer it tonight. I'll put him on the spot. <laughs> anybody? Don't be shy. We'll try to answer it. If I don't know it, I'll tell you I'll get the answer and bring it back to you. How's that? I got a question for you. You got a question? All right. I think this is, this is a question that some have heard me ask. Some of the young people have heard me ask before. But I think it's important to talk about, um, and I want you to answer this. Um, does everyone pray in the same fashion? No, not at all. I think uh, the thing is every one of us have a different personality. And therefore, thank the Lord for that, because you sure don't need more than one of me, and uh, we don't need more than one of you. Uh, definitely don't need more than one of him. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sorry. I'm just kidding. Uh, but uh, but all we all have a different progress, personality, brother. and God uniquely made us to be us. And I think where people get in trouble is this. They see God use somebody in a specific way. And they think, well, that works. So then they try to imitate that. God never created you to be a copy. He created you to be an original. So if you need to walk and pray, you walk and pray. If you need to lay on your face and pray, you pray. And you talk to God just like you would talk to anybody else. You don't have to use thou's and these. You don't have to be all, uh, uh, use old English. You can talk to him. He knows your heart. He knows who you are. And uh, he knows everything about you. So you can approach him as your father and as you've been his child. And he's not just any father, but he is a good, good father. And he desires for us to come to him. I heard a man make this statement uh, this week uh, in a message that I was listening to. And I had to check it to make sure, and it was right, because he said something that, that stuck in my spirit. When the prodigal son that you read of in the Gospel of Luke, come to his senses, and he was sitting in a far country, sitting in a field where he would have ate what the swine was eating, and he simply said, there is more than enough at my father's house. He did not say, I'm going to go to the father's house. 
He said, I am going to go to the Father. He didn't go to the the church. He didn't go to the house and everybody that was there because he understood this. He probably wasn't going to be accepted by the house because he knew he had an older brother there that didn't approve of all the stuff that he had done. So he wasn't concerned about being accepted by the house. But he said, I'm going to go to my father and I'm going to ask him. And I I say that to say this, it doesn't matter what others may say, think, or do about you. Their opinion doesn't matter. What matters is that we're accepted by the Father, and he accepts us when we approach him with a pure heart in the manner that the way that he created us to be. Prayer is our greatest, greatest defense, and uh, it is also our greatest privilege to be able to have the opportunity to sit and speak with our Heavenly Father. Not occasionally, but continually. And we know this, that he is faithful and he is just to hear and to respond. Amen. So I'd encourage you, keep the right attitude when we go to a place of prayer. And let's continue to just believe and trust God, not for just some things, but for everything that we have need of. Amen. I want to pray with you tonight. Is that all right before we leave? And we're just going to pray and believe God to meet us right where we need him to be. Then let us pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you today. I thank you for the privilege that we're able to come into your house and to worship and to honor you as well as to take some time and just slow down and sit amongst your people and begin to discuss your word. And Father, today, I pray that all of us would have ears to hear and hearts to receive the importance of of this discussion tonight, the power of prayer. And Father, today we enact that which we read there in what Paul shared with Timothy and with us in your word. Lord, we lift before you, Lord, all men, believing and trusting that you have the ability to touch their heart. And Lord, I pray that you would touch the heart of the evil man just like you would touch the heart of the righteous man. And Lord, I pray that there would be a wave of repentance that would sweep through humanity in this season, in this hour. Because Lord, we know this, it is not your desire for any to be lost, but it is your desire that all would come to a place of repentance uh, where they could walk in a manner that is pleasing to you. So today, Father, we're praying, Lord, for strongholds to be broken. We're praying for there to be an igniting of revival fire in our nation. And Lord, I pray that there would begin to be a burning in the heart of your people like never before, where there would be an urgency to steal away and to spend time with you and to spend time in your word. And Father, not just for us to speak, but Lord, for us to sit in your presence and that we would have an ear to hear that which your spirit is speaking. Lord, we ask for wisdom. We ask for knowledge. We ask for understanding to be granted to the people of God. And Lord, we ask for a fresh outpouring of your Holy Ghost ghost and fire. Lord, where there would be a removing of of evil and there would be an emerging of righteousness. And Father, we take a stand today and we speak against darkness uh, and we declare that Jesus Christ is still the only way. And Father, today I pray for every situation that might be represented in this room. Lord, those that need a healing touch. Lord, that those that need a financial blessing. Lord, I pray that there would just be a, Lord, just a release of your anointing in their situations. Uh, I pray for businesses to be blessed uh, abundantly. Lord, let divine favor rest upon the righteous businessman and businesswoman, Lord, that they would continue to be able to further the gospel to the nation of the world. And Father, today we ask that you would continue to go with us throughout this week. Lord, I pray for those that's going to have um, medical procedures done this week. And uh, Lord, those that are preparing for those in the, in the next few days as well. And Father, today I pray that your healing hand would rest upon them. I also pray for the medical staff and the, and the teams that's going to be working. Uh, and Father, I pray that there would be no complications. Uh, but Father, we know this, you're also a God that's able to do the miraculous. And Father, I pray that uh, there would just be a manifestation of that as we call out to you. And Lord, we ask that you would continue to lead us, guide us, and direct us in Jesus' name. Bring us back to this place Sunday morning, ready to worship, ready to hear, ready to give unto you. And we'll give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 
and amen. Everybody's Pastor Jay here. I just want to thank you for watching. I hope that this message challenged and changed your life with the power of the Holy Ghost. We ask that you continue following us and watching us weekly. And if you want to follow us on any social media platform, you'll find the link to all those platforms in the description below. We love you. So does God. Have a great day.